GameStop hearing. Uh, this time, uh, we're going to hear, uh, it's a hearing, from SEC Chairman Gary Gensler. Uh, members uh, of the committee will be able to present their policy recommendations this time to the SEC, maybe for some rule changes. Join us now with more North Carolina Congressman Patrick McHenry. He's the ranking member of the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, Congressman, it's, it's good to see you. Um, the stock never did go back to 20. It's still up uh, with a very high valuation. A lot has happened. Well, I don't know if it's high, but a lot has happened now. We know, uh, you know that uh, the gentleman that all the hope is being placed on, the Chewy founder, uh, has installed some new people, trying to transition it now to a, uh, a, an E model. And, uh, and I don't know. Do we really need a hearing? It seems like the market is working pretty well. And maybe the, even those people that were in early, maybe they were on to something. Who's to say? Well, it's Capitol Hill, so I don't think this is ever about the GameStop uh, or Reddit or Reddit users. Um, it was about the attempt to change market structure. Uh, I don't think, uh, and that's much more about a policy agenda or a, uh, an ideological agenda uh, among Hill Democrats than it is about the, the realities of the market. And, uh, and frankly, the, the policies that they attached to this hearing they wanted to discuss, they attached to the first hearing. Uh, before we had a single fact about the, the nature of get the GameStop trade and what happened there with Reddit users. Uh, so this is all about uh, changing market structure, regulating it differently, and in, in fact, uh, pushing retail investors in. I guess going back to the, the, the early days, I, I think viewpoints have changed, given uh, the, the point that I was making uh, before. Is there less of a uh, uh, an inclination to say, wow, we've got to do something here to stop this at this point, that, that maybe it was the, even among Democrats, that it was the market at work? Yes. Yes, that, that this, this was a, you know, a singular trade, uh, that retail investors are in the market like never before. Uh, that on balance is a good thing when your constituents uh, uh, want to be involved in the capital markets and like what they're, they're uh, getting. Uh, and the choices that they're getting, I think that uh, slows down the, the political machinery uh, enough that you know skeptics can can start asking a lot of questions whether or not there there's a, a need for some uh, major uh, market change uh, like uh, like what uh, my Democrat colleagues are talking about with banning payment for order flow, which has uh, resulted in uh, zero commission trades for retail investors and and on average I think retail investors benefit from that. Uh, so I think there's a, there's a slowdown in that process, thankfully, and cooler heads are prevailing. We could talk to you about so many things uh, with, with Gensler. Do, are, is there going to be a discussion of crypto today, do you think? Does anyone know? Yes. Uh, I mean, we know he's an expert. Are, what kind of questions would you ask him? What, what would you hope to hear from him? Well, uh, there are a couple things. So a, a number of my Republican colleagues will, will treat this as I will, as the uh, first uh, post-confirmation uh, hearing uh, by uh, Chairman Gensel. And so we have a lot of questions about the agenda of, of this SEC, SEC chair. We know uh, there's a lot of discussion about his tenure at the CFTC. Look, for my focus, though, I think there's real opportunities around small business capital formation. Uh, and uh, cryptocurrencies around digital assets uh, that we can actually achieve some bipartisan results and, and actually have some consensus driven policy making. Uh, I'll spend uh, some time this morning uh, asking Chairman Gensler about the, the nature of that, uh, those opportunities um, and see where we can actually find consensus. Uh, that's my hope is that we can work on consensus driven items first and the more controversial things second. The uh, I think we had we were talking to the the president of Lyft when we saw this uh, Department of Labor uh, with uh, they withdrew a Trump era rule. It would have made it easier for gig economy companies uh, to classify their workers as independent contractors. You've got you've had a, a, an act that you've tried to introduce. You're going to reintroduce the gig workers equity compensation act. Will, will that help? Uh, yes. Look, uh, there there are two things at play here. Uh, first, AB5, which was a California initiative that was rejected uh, by the voters that, that would uh, redefine uh, gig workers, contract workers uh, as full-time employees. And even the liberal voters of California rejected that as too extreme. Yet the Biden administration is trying to attempt um, 
uh, a similar rule at the federal level. Uh, that tells you how extreme they are uh, for the unions and uh, how anti-technology some within this administration are. I think that's problematic. What I think is we should go a different direction. We should not only embrace the way that uh, work has changed, but I think we also need to ensure that those workers in this changed environment get equity just like office workers get, just like yeah. C-suite workers get in startups. And whether it's DoorDash going public, I think uh, uh, those that are working in the office at DoorDash uh, versus those dashers that are actually uh, making that app work, uh, I think those dashers should have uh, been given equity compensation and real uh, upside opportunity. And so my bill would permit that. And I think we need a broader look at the ownership uh, economy so that average workers can own the, uh, the great companies that they get yeah. to work for. I know Andrew wants in, uh, but just, I guess just making the point that I guess you pick just about any issue. We kind of know where the Biden administration is going to come down, don't we? The, the IP the, the thing with, with the farm. But we, we don't even need, I don't even need to hear. I just know, where am I going? Am I going to the right or the left? Uh, on camera, I was going right. We just know they're going to end up over somewhere over here where I'm actually out of the shot uh, on all these things. I mean, it's consistent. So just get ready for the next three years, Andrew. Well, and I think hey, that's Congressman, uh, uh, yeah. Go right in. I, I, I was just going to ask you, you know, we have the CEO of Uber coming on the program in just about an hour from now, Derek Khosrowshahi. And my question to you is, how you feel about workers who actually have turned these jobs into the equivalent of full-time jobs, meaning um, drivers, for example, who are, who are working 35, 40, 45, 50 hours a week. And do you think of those workers in a different way than workers who were doing this in a more part-time way, you know, five, 10 hours a week? So those that are, you are consistently over the course of 12 months working a, a full day shift, relative to, to the others, should they get benefits and maybe the others not? I mean, is there some middle ground here or no? Well, I think the, the company should be given the option and the employees need to be given the option. Frankly, right now, Andrew, in my district, we have 20 and $25 an hour jobs with full benefits that don't do background checks. That are uh, These jobs are being left unfilled. Uh, we have the hotel industry uh, uh, in Western North Carolina where they have, uh, I talked to one hotel uh, owner owns a couple small hotels. He has a third, uh, he needs to in increase his workforce by nearly 50%. Um, and uh, it, he can't get it. And he's offering $20 an hour to, uh, to, to um, which is a living wage in, in my district. Um, and so there are a number of jobs that are being left unfilled with pay, with benefits that are commensurate with a living wage. So. When, when you raise this issue of gig workers, maybe there's uh, uh, workplace flexibility. Like I wanna be able to work once my kids go to bed. I talked to one uh, Uber driver who said that very same thing. So the workplace flexibility, the hours of flexibility, maybe that's worth the trade-off. Uh, but I think we need to give employees the choice rather than having mandated by the government on how they have to handle this. Right. Uh, Congressman, fair enough. Uh, we will continue this discussion with the CEO uh, of Uber in just a little bit. We appreciate it and we look forward uh, to that hearing today on GameStop and the first uh, time we will be hearing from Gary Gensler. Uh, coming up